Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the second video uh, in the uh, series of videos on the uh, sickle cell anemia. Uh, in the previous video I've told you that sickle cell anemia is a disease in which the body produces abnormally shaped red blood cells that have crescent or sickle shape as you can see in this particular image and I've told you that the uh, sickle cell anemia uh, that actually is because of a mutation in the HBB gene and the sickle cell anemia is inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern. Uh, I've told you that the hemoglobin is a major protein within the RBCs and there are three types of the hemoglobin. One is known as the uh, HBA1, which comprise about 95% of the LL hemoglobin. The second type of the hemoglobin is uh, HBA2, uh, which comprise less than 4% of the LL hemoglobin. And the HBF, the F actually refers to the fetus. So this kind of the hemoglobin is only present in the uh, fetus. Uh, then I told you that the uh, change of the shape of the red blood cell into the crescent one is because of mutation and in this particular mutation uh, the glutamic acid which is present in the uh, normal red blood cell hemoglobin that is replaced by a valine and the changing of the uh, glutamic acid uh, into the valine uh, by mutation actually leads to the uh, formation of the sickle red blood cells. Then uh, I told you about the pathophysiology that when the glutamic acid is replaced by the valine at position number six, that is going to decrease the solubility of the uh, hemoglobin, uh, which actually lead to the formation of the polymers. And the formation of the polymers is responsible for the distortion of the red blood cell into the characteristic cell shape. Uh, then I've told you that the normal hemoglobin, they do not clump to each other, but uh, when there is a mutation, when the glutamic acid is replaced by the valine, the hemoglobin, they clump with each other, and that, is, that clumping is also responsible for clogging of the uh, blood vessels. Uh, then I told you about mutations that the uh, hemoglobin, that this particular mutation can have effects at the cellular level can have effect at the organism level but there is also a bright side of this particular mutation uh, some of the positive effects that the carriers of the sickle cell allele they are resistant to the malaria because the parasite that cannot reside inside the sickle shaped blood cell because they are killed uh, over there in this particular video i want to focus on the uh, genetics of the sickle cell anemia now the sickle cell anemia is an example of the autosomal recessive disorder. So the first thing you need to understand what this autosomal recessive mean. This term autosomal mean that the gene is present on the autosomal chromosome. Uh, when you talk about the chromosomes in the human beings, they are usually classified into two classes. One is known as the autosomes or the autosomal chromosomes and the other one they are known as the sex chromosome. So uh, the pair from uh, the pair from pair number one to pair number 22, they are usually uh, known as the autosomal chromosome or the autosome and the 23rd pair uh, that is actually known as the uh, sex chromosome pair. So when you talk about the autosomal, we mean that the gene that is responsible for the disease that is present on the autosomal chromosome and in case of the sickle cell anemia the hbb gene is present on the uh, chromosome number 11 therefore it is autosomal in nature what this term a recessive mean is that both copy of the genes they are mutated and the uh, both of these copies uh, in the mutated form are needed to cause the disease in an affected person uh, when you talk about the genetics uh, uh, we have got two alleles for each of the gene one is coming from the father the one is coming from the mother so when you talk about the recessive disorders that means that you will be getting the mutated copy from your father as well as from your mother and when you get both of both copies in the mutated form you are going to get that particular disease when you talk about the sickle cell anemia a person who carries one copy of the mutated gene and the other copy is normal this particular individual are known as the carriers for the sickle cell anemia condition they are also sometimes known as the sickle cell trait so the term carrier and the sickle cell trait means that out of the two copies one is mutated and the other copy is normal 
When you talk about the inheritance pattern of the sickle cell anemia, uh, there can be uh, different kind of the scenarios. So let us discuss these uh, scenarios in detail. Uh, the first thing is that uh, we will be using the capital S for the uh, normal allele and we will be using the small s for the diseased allele. So the uh, uh, capital S mean means that the beta globin chain that is normal and the small s that will mean that the beta globin chain that is in the mutated form. By that I mean that in this particular small s the glutamic acid has been replaced by the valine and in the capital S at position number 6 there is a glutamic acid. So uh, let us uh, talk about some of the uh, conditions. For example, uh, when we talk about the uh, first scenario, if the mother genotype is capital S and capital S, that means that both of the copies in the mother genome, they are normal. And we call this particular condition is the homozygous one because both of the alleles, they are the same. Similarly, the father's genotype, again, it is having uh, both, both of the copies, they are normal and the father is also homozygous. So when you talk about the uh, gametes that the mother is forming, so the mother is going to make a single kind of the gamete that is capital S. So all of the gametes uh, produced by the mother, they will be carrying the capital S allele. And uh, when you talk about the father, so as the father is homozygous for the normal allele, so all of the gametes that is produced by the father, again, they will be having the normal copy or normal allele of that particular gene. Now, uh, in this particular form, on the left side of the funnel square, I'm showing you the uh, gametes of the uh, mother. And on this particular side, I'm showing you the gametes of the father. Uh, uh, this is a typographic mistake. This is not capital D. This is capital S. So these are the gametes of the father. So this will be capital S. And this will also be the uh, capital S. So when you talk about this particular condition, when both of the parents, they are normal and they are homozygous, mean they carry uh, the normal alleles, all of the offspring, they will be normal and their genotype will be capital S and the capital S. So this is the first scenario and the mother and the father, they are homozygous, they are normal, all of the offsprings, they will be normal. When we talk about the second scenario, that, that the genotype of the mother is heterozygous, that means that she is carrying one normal copy, one normal allele and one diseased allele. And the father genotype is homozygous, he is carrying both the copies in the uh, normal form. So the gametes of the mother, now that will be of two types because the nature of the mother is heterozygous. 50% uh, of the gametes, they will be carrying the capital S allele. 50% of the uh, gametes, they will be carrying the small s allele. When you talk about the gametes of the father, all of the gametes, they will be carrying the capital S or the normal allele. So again, this one is the, uh, this is showing you the gametes of the mother. So this one is capital S from here. This one is small s. So it is going to be represented over here. The gametes of the father, they, they are going to contain the capital S and the capital S. So when you cross them, as you can see, this one, this, uh, this double S and this double S in the capital form that is actually showing you that the, those particular individual, they will be normal. But these 50% of the offspring represented by capital S and small s, again capital S and small s, they will be the carrier for the sickle cell anemia. They will not be showing any symptoms, but they will be carrier and they can uh, transfer the uh, diseased allele to the next generation. The third scenario is that when both the mother and the father, they are heterozygous. Of course, the mother, uh, if that is in heterozygous form, she is not going to show any symptom. The father is in the heterozygous form. He is not going to show, show any symptoms. But when you talk about the uh, offsprings, you can see that the gametes of the mother, 50% will be carrying the capital S allele. Again, 50% will be carrying the small s allele. Same will be the case with the gametes of the father. 50% will be having the capital S allele and 50% will be having the small s allele. So when you cross them, these are the gametes of the mother. These are the gametes of the father. So when you cross them, what you will be getting is 25% of the uh, offspring, they will be normal as represented by the capital S and capital S shown over here. 50% of them, 50% of the offspring, they will be carrier as represented by the genotype capital S and the small s. So these two, they will be the carriers. 
but 25 percent of the offsprings they can be affected so they are going to be affected so uh, this uh, should not be uh, uh, you can see uh, uh, this is it is not uh, ordinarily a thing that when both the mother and the father they are normal but they are getting uh, an offspring uh, which is having the sickle cell disease so in that particular case if both the mother and the father they are not showing any symptoms and if uh, one of the offspring is affected that means that both the, both the mother and the father they are in the heterozygous form there can be another scenario that when both the mother and the father they are affected that means that they are uh, the mother is carrying the both of the uh, diseased alleles again the father is carrying the uh, both of the alleles in the diseased form so this is a very simple case all of the offspring they will be affected because of the uh, gametes of the mother and the gametes of the father they are having the diseased alleles so all of the offspring they will be made in this particular condition all of the offspring will be affected uh, the fifth scenario can be if the mother is uh, homozygous, that means she is a patient of the sickle cell anemia because it, uh, both of the uh, alleles they are of the diseased nature, but the father is normal and in the, in the homozygous form. That means that uh, the father is carrying both of the copies uh, in the uh, normal form, not in the diseased form. So when you talk about the gametes of the mother, of course, all of the gametes produced by the mother, they will be carrying the diseased allele, but all of the gametes produced by the father, they will be uh, carrying the uh, uh, capital allele or the normal allele. So when you cross them, as you can see over here, all of the offspring, they will be the carrier because uh, they are, because all of the offspring, they are getting a normal copy of the uh, allele uh, from their father and a diseased allele from their mother so all of the individuals all of the offspring they will be the carrier and they will not they, they will not be showing any symptoms of the sickle cell anemia when you talk about the uh, like scenario number six there can be like the mother is uh, homozygous again she is a patient of the sickle cell anemia the father is normal but in uh, but in the heterozygous form now in this particular case the things that will be a little bit different than the uh, scenario number five because all of the gametes made by the mother they will be carrying the small s allele 50 percent of the gametes of the father will be carrying the capital s allele 50 percent uh, of them will be carrying the small s allele so when you cross them as you can see these two individual or 50 percent of the offspring they will be carrier for the disease but 50 percent of them they will be uh, affected so uh, these are some of the scenarios that uh, you can see when you talk about the uh, inheritance pattern of the sickle cell anemia so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends and we will continue the discussion on the sickle cell anemia in the next video